Introduction to the Patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Welcome to our episode on the Patriarchs, a foundational part of biblical history. We will explore the stagas of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and a sub-story about Joseph. These narratives followed the dispersion of people after the Tower of Babel event and mark a significant shift in the biblical story focusing on the individual lives and God's direct intervention. Introduction to the Patriarchal Story, The Call of Abram The story of Abram, later known as Abraham, signifies a pivotal shift in the biblical narrative, particularly in the context of the post-Babel era. After the Tower of Babel incident, where humanity's pride led to disunity and dispersion, the narrative zooms into a more focused personal story with the call of Abram in Genesis chapter 12, verse 9. This call is not just a simple invitation. It is a divine beckoning that marks the beginning of a new conventional relationship between God and humankind. Abram's background in Or of the Chaldees Abram's early life in Or of Chaldees offers a stark contrast to the journey he is about to embark upon. Or, a significant city in ancient Mesopotamia, was known for its advanced civilization and polytheistic religion. Abram, along with his family, including his father Terah and brother Nahor, was immersed in a culture that worshipped multiple gods. This context highlights the transformative nature of Abram's call as it required him to live not just his homeland but also the religious traditions and practices he grew up with. The Significance of the Call The call of Abram is monumental in several ways. First, it represents a direct personal interaction between God and an individual, a departure from the more collective experiences of earlier narratives like the Flood or Babel. This individualized approach lays the foundation for the concept of a personal relationship with God, a theme that would resonate through the Bible. Second, the call embodies a journey of faith. Abram is asked to leave his country, his people, and his father's household for a known land that God promises to show him. This act of leaving everything familiar behind and stepping into the unknown is a popular testament to Abram's faith and trust in God's promise. The journey to Canaan and the establishment of a new people. The destination of Abram's journey, Canaan, is, a significant in its, is significant in itself. It is as just a geographical relocation but a spiritual journey toward establishing a new identity. The land of Canaan, which Abram is promised, stands in stark contrast to Ur's urban polytheistic environment. This promised land is where Abraham will lay the foundations of a new nation through which God plans to bless all the peoples of the earth. The Covenant and its Implications The call of Abraham sets the stage for the establishment of a covenant, a theme central to the Abrahamic faiths. This covenant is just a promise to Abraham and his descendants but a strategic move in God's plan for redemption. Through Abraham's lineage, God intends to create a people who would be the carriers of his blessings, laws, and ultimately the lineage through which the Messiah would come. Abram's Journey and Sarai's Barrenness The journey of Abram is marked by challenges and acts of faith. Despite receiving God's promise of blessings, Abram faced the issue of Sarai's barrenness, casting doubt on the fulfillment of God's promises. Abram's decision to bring along his nephew Lot as a potential heir reveals a lack of complete trust in God's promise. This act illustrates the human tendency to rely on visible assurances than the divine promises. Introduction The Journey of Faith The narrative of Abram who becomes Abraham is a journey marked not only by physical movement but also by spiritual and emotional challenges. It begins with a profound act of faith, leaving everything familiar based on God's promise. This journey 
encapsulates both the physical relocation for or to Canaan in the internal journey of trust and belief in God's promises. Abram's response to God's call. Abram's response to God's call is a defining moment in his life. Despite being entrenched in the culture and religion of Ur, Abram chooses to obey God's command to live. This decision is an act of immense faith and obedience, setting a precedent for what it means to follow God. Abram's journey is not a solitary one. He brings his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and others in his household, indicating the communal aspect of his faith journey. The Challenge of Sarai's Barrenness A significant challenge Abram faces is the barrenness of his wife Sarai. This issue presents a profound contradiction between God's promise of making Abram a great nation and the reality of Sarai's inability to bear children. Sarai's barrenness is not just a personal struggle, but also a theological dilemma, as it casts doubts on the fulfillment of God's promises. This tension between promise and reality is a recurring theme in biblical narratives, often highlighting the need for faith and patience in the face of uncertainty and delay. Abram and Lot, a human solution to a divine promise. Abram's decision to bring along his nephew Lot reveals a complex layer of his faith journey. While it demonstrates Abram's concern for his family, it also reflects a human attempt to find a solution to the problem of his airlessness. Lot as a potential heir represents Abram's struggle between relying on visible human solutions and trusting in the invisible divine promise. This tension underscores the human tendency to seek tangible assurances when divine promises seem distant or impossible. Trusting in God's promise, a test of faith. Abram's journey, especially in the context of Sarah's barrenness, becomes a profound test of faith. It challenges Abram to trust in God's timing and methods, even when they contradict human logic and expectations. This aspect of the narrative invites reflection on the nature of faith, particularly the challenges of believing in promises that seem impossible for a human standpoint. Altars and Possession of the Land Abram's journey through Canaan, marked by building altars at Shechem, between Al and Bethel, and in Najib, symbolizes his claim and spiritual possession of the land. This altar represent points of divine encounter and Abram's acknowledgement of God's sovereignty over the promised land. Introduction, Significance of Altars in Abram's Journey The narrative of Abram's journey through Canaan, the building of altars plays a crucial role. These altars are not mere physical structures. They are profound symbols of faith, worship, and the acknowledgement of God's promises. His altar, built by Abraham, marks significant moments and locations in his journey, serving as a testament to spiritual claim and possession of the land promised by God. The altar at Shechem, a symbol of divine promise. The first altar Abraham builds at Shechem is particularly significant. Shechem, located in the heart of Canaan, is where God first reiterates his promise to give the land to Abraham's descendants. By building an altar here, Abram not only worships God, but also stakes a symbolic claim on the land. This act of building an altar is an act of faith, acknowledging God's sovereignty and the certainty of His promises, despite the visible reality of the land being occupied by others. Between I and Bethel, an altar of worship and return. Abram's next altar is built between I and Bethel. This location is crucial as it becomes a place of return for Abram. After a brief sojourn in Egypt, Abram returns to this very spot, again building an altar. This repeated act signifies Abram's renewed commitment to God and serves as a reminder of God's unchanging promises. The altar between Ai and Bethel stands as a symbol of worship, repentance, and the reaffirmation of faith. The Altar in Egypt, a testament of ongoing faith. 
As Abram continues his journey, he builds another altar in the Negev. This southern region of Canaan represents a new territory within the promised land. The construction of an altar here symbolizes Abram's ongoing faith and trust in God's promises, even as he moves through different parts of the land. His altar in these diverse locations collectively signifies Abram's spiritual journey and claim over the entire land of Canaan as promised by God. Altars as point of divine encounter Throughout Abram's journey, this altar serves as a point of divine encounter. There are places where Abram seeks God, offers sacrifices, and worships. Its altar is a physical manifestation of Abram's relationship with God, representing moments of communication, commitment, and divine assurance. They stand as enduring symbols of God's presence and Abram's faith in the midst of the land yet to be fully realized as his own. God's Promises to Abram, Land of Spring and Blessing God's promises to Abram encompasses land, erects, a kingdom through his offering, Am, and blessings through the covenant bereft. However, the immediate reality of Abram's life, childlessness, and lack of land ownership stand in stark contrast to these grand promises, highlighting the faith required to trust in God's plan. Introduction The Contrast Between Promises and Reality In the story of Abram, God's promises form a central theme. These promises include the leaf of land, the assurance of numerous offspring, and the bestowal of blessings. However, these grand divine assurances stand in stark contrast to the immediate reality of Abraham's life, marked by childlessness and a nomadic existence without land ownership. This contrast underscores the immense faith required to trust in God's plan, despite the apparent contradictions. The Promise of Land, Erich The first of God's promises to Abraham is the gift of land, particularly the land of Canaan. This promise is significant as land ownership in the ancient world was a symbol of stability, prosperity, and identity. For Abram, a nomadic wanderer, the promise of a homeland signifies a future of security and permanence. However, during Abram's lifetime, he never fully possesses the land. He remains a sojourner in Canaan. This aspect of the promise test, Abram's faith, and foreshadows the future experiences of his descendants who will also journey towards this promised land. The Promise of Offspring Am Perhaps the most challenging promise for Abram to believe is the assurance of offspring. In a culture where lineage and descendants were crucial for legacy and continuity, Abram's selflessness with wife Sarai is a source of deep personal and social concern. God's promise of making Abram's offspring as numerous as the stars in the sky seems impossible in the face of Sarai's barrenness. This promise requires Abram to look beyond his immediate circumstances and trust in God's ability to fulfill his word in ways that transcends human understanding. The Promise of Blessing and Covenant Buried The final element of God's promises to Abram is the blessing which is tied to the establishment of a covenant buried between God and Abram. This covenant is as just a promise of personal blessings for Abram and his family, but extends to all nations. Through Abram, God intends to bring about a universal blessing, indicating the broad scope of his redemptive plan. The covenant also establishes a special relationship between God and Abram's descendants, marking them as a chosen people with a unique role in God's overarching plan for humanity. Trusting in God's plan amidst contradictory realities The central challenge in Abram's journey is to maintain faith in God's promises despite the starkly different realities of his current experience. Abram's life becomes a testament to the power of faith in the face of doubt and delay. His story encourages a trust in divine promises that surpass immediate circumstances and visible realities. 
This faith is not passive, but involves active engagement with God, including moments of questioning, seeking reassurance, and recommitment to God's plan. Testing and Blessing in Egypt Abram's journey is not without its trials. Faced with famine, Abram's decision to go to Egypt in the subsequent deception regarding Sarai's identity reflect a moment of wavering faith. God's intervention in this situation resulting in Pharaoh's sending Abram away reinforces the theme of divine protection and guidance despite human shortcomings. Introduction Abram's Famine-Driven Journey to Egypt Abram's sojourn is characterized not only by moments of great faith but also by significant tests and challenges. One of the earliest tests Abram faces is a severe famine in the land of Canaan. This famine, a natural calamity, compels Abram to make a critical decision to leave the promised land temporarily and seek refuge in Egypt. This decision, driven by necessity, sets the stage for a complex interplay of faith, fear, and divine intervention. Abram's Wavering Faith, The Deception Regarding Sarai Upon entering Egypt, Abram faces a predicament concerning his wife Sarai's safety and his own. Fearing that the Egyptians would kill him to take Sarai, who was very beautiful, Abram devises a plan. He asks Sarai to say that she is his sister, not his wife. This decision, born out of fear for his life, marks a moment of wavering faith for Abram. He resorts to deception, compromising on truth to protect himself thereby putting Sarai in a vulnerable position. This incident reflects the complexities of Abram's character where faith and fear coexist. God's Intervention and Pharaoh's Response Despite Abram's deceptive strategy, God intervenes to protect Sarai. When Pharaoh takes Sarai into his palace, God afflicts Pharaoh in his household with serious diseases. This divine intervention prompts Pharaoh to seek the cause of these afflictions, leading to the revelation of the truth about Sarai's identity. Pharaoh's reaction is one of indignation and confusion. He questions Abram's motives for lying and promptly sends him away with Sarai, along with gifts and possessions. This outcome demonstrates God's protective hand over Abram and Sarai, despite Abram's lapse in judgment. Theme of Divine Protection and Guidance This episode in Egypt underscores a recurring theme in Abram's narrative, Divine Protection and Guidance Despite Human Shortcomings. God's intervention in Egypt is not just an act of rescue, but also a reminder of his commitment to the covenant with Abram. Even in moments of doubt and fear, God remains faithful to his promises. This theme resonates throughout Abram's journey, where God's grace and mercy are evident even in the face of human error and weakness. Separation from Lot and War of the Kings The separation from Lot and the subsequent war involving Sodom and Gomorrah further tests Abram's faith. Abram's rescue of Lot and his encounter with Melchizedek, the king of Salem and a priest of God Most High, offer profound insights into the nature of righteousness and priesthood, prefiguring the priesthood of Christ as described in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 to 3. In conclusion, the stories of the patriarchs beginning with Abraham are rich in theological and spiritual significance. They explore themes of faith, promise, testing, and divine intervention, laying the groundwork for the unfolding story of God's relationship with humanity. As we journey through these narratives, we gain a deeper understanding of God's plan and the faith required to follow His calling. Introduction, Challenges and Abram's Journey Abram's journey is marked by a series of events, of events that test his faith and character. Among these are the separation from his nephew Lot and the subsequent war involving the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. These events not only challenges Abram, but also provide profound insights into themes of righteousness, intercession, and divine promise. 
Separation from Lot, a test of faith and patience. The separation between Abram and Lot occurs due to growing strife between their herdsmen, exacerbated by limited resources. Abram, in a display of humility and peace, gives Lot the choice of land, demonstrating his trust in God's provision. Lot chooses the fertile plains near Sodom, while Abram remains in the land of Canaan. This separation is significant as it tests Abram's patience and faith in God's promise regarding the land and his offspring. It shows Abram's willingness to prioritize peace and trust in God's plan over immediate material gain. The War of the Kings and Abram's Rescue of Lot The war involving Sodom and Gomorrah and subsequent capture of Lot bring Abram into a conflict he did not seek. Abram's decision to rescue Lot, leading a small force against more formidable kings, is an act of bravery and loyalty. This rescue mission is not just a family affair, but a demonstration of Abram's commitment to justice and his protective instinct for his family. Abram's successful rescue of Lot, without any loss, highlights God's favor and protection over him. Encounter with Melchizedek, Righteousness and Priesthood One of the most intriguing aspects of this narrative is Abram's encounter with Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and a priest of Most High God. Melchizedek's blessing of Abram and Abram's giving of a tenth of everything to Melchizedek are laden with theological significance. This meeting prefigures the priesthood of Christ as later describes in Hebrews chapter 7. Melchizedek, a king and priest without genealogy, becomes a type of Christ whose priesthood is, is, is eternal and not based on lineage. This encounter emphasizes the themes of righteousness, blessing, and the universal scope of God's priesthood. Conclusion Theological and Spiritual Significance of the Patriarch's Narratives The stories of the patriarchs, starting with Abraham, are replete with theological depth and spiritual lessons. They explore rich themes such as faith in the face of uncertainty, the fulfillment of divine promises, and the interplay between human actions and divine intervention. Through these narratives, we gain a deeper understanding of God's overarching plan for humanity and the kind of faith required to walk in accordance with His calling. Abram's journey in particular lays a foundational framework for understanding the nature of faith, righteousness, and God's covenant relationship with His people. God's covenant with Abram Foundation for Faith and Promise Introduction The Significance of God's Covenant with Abram The covenant between God and Abram, formerly Abram, stands as a cornerstone in the biblical narrative representing a deepening of the relationship between God and humanity. This covenant is foundational to the understanding of faith and promise in the Abrahamic tradition. The Unilateral Covenant in Genesis chapter 15 in Genesis chapter 15, we find a critical development in the story of Abraham, the establishment of a unilateral covenant by God. Unlike bilateral agreements where both parties have obligations, this unilateral covenant involves God as the sole active party making promises with Abraham as the passive recipient. This feature of the covenant underscores the grace and sovereignty of God in his dealings with Abraham. The Ritual of the Covenant and the Symbolism The covenant is sealed through a unique and powerful ritual. Abram is instructed to cut a hyper in half and God, represented by a smoking fire pot and a blazing dirt, passes between the halves. This act is laden with symbolism and seriousness. In ancient Near Eastern culture, such a ritual was a way of saying, May this happen to me if I do not uphold my part of the agreement. It signifies God's unwavering commitment to His promises. The passing between the halves by God alone highlights the covenant's unilateral nature. It is God who guarantees the fulfillment of His promises. The promise of offspring and land Central to this covenant is the promise of offspring and land. 
God assures Abraham that his descendants will be numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. This promise goes beyond the immediate challenge of Sarah's formerly Sarah, barrenness, projecting a future where Abraham's lineage becomes a multitude. The covenant also reaffirms the promise of the land of Canaan to Abraham's descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey, signifying prosperity and blessing. Legal Significance and Kinship Implications Scholars like Franz Moore Cross Jr. and Moshe Winfield have noted the legal significance of such a covenant in the ancient context, the privileges to previously unrelated parties. In this case, uh, it forges a relationship between God and Abraham's descendants, granting them a unique status as chosen people. This legal perspective enhances our understanding of the covenant as not merely a spiritual agreement, but also one with societal communal implications. The Hagar episode, Doubts and Alternatives, Genesis chapter 16. Abram's story continues with his doubt and reliance on human solutions exemplified in the Hagar episode. Abram, having already considered Lot and his servant Eliezer as potential heirs, turns to Hagar, Sarai's maid, as a surrogate mother. This action leads to the birth of Ismail, the ancestor of the Arab nations, mirroring the whole narrative where human initiative tries to circumvent divine premises. Introduction, Human Solutions to Divine Promises The story of Hagar in Genesis chapter 16 introduces a complex and troubling episode in Abram's journey of faith. This narrative illustrates Abram's struggle with doubt and his reliance on human strategies to fulfill God's promises, reflecting a universal human tendency to try and expedite or control divine plans. Abram's continuing doubt in the turn to Hagar. Despite God's repeated assurances and promises, Abram and Sarai experienced ongoing doubt, primarily due to their advanced age and Sarah's barrenness. In an attempt to resolve the issue of Abram's heir, Sarai proposes that Abram have a child with her Egyptian maidservant Hagar. This suggestion reflects a common practice in ancient times but also indicates a lack of patience and faith in God's timing and methods. Hagar, surrogacy, and Ismail's birth. Abrams agrees to Sarai's plan, and Hagar becomes pregnant to this child. The decision, while seemingly offering a solution to Abrams' lack of an heir, creates immediate interpersonal conflicts and long-term consequences. The birth of Ismail, Hagar's son, is significant as it introduces a new lineage that will become the ancestors of the Arab nations. However, this action also demonstrates the complications that arise when human beings take divine matters into their own hands. The whole narrative parallel, human initiative versus divine promise. The Hagar episode has parallels with the whole narrative in Genesis. Just as Adam and Eve sought to gain knowledge by their initiative, circumventing God's command, Abram and Sarai attempt to fulfill God's promises through their means. This human initiative to control or expedite divine plans highlights a recurring theme in the biblical narrative, the tension between human agency and divine sovereignty. Lessons from the Hagar episode The story of Hagar in Is and Ismail teaches important lessons about faith, patience, and the complexity of human divine interactions. It underscores the challenges of waiting for God's promise to unfold and the pitfalls of taking shortcuts to achieve what God has promised. Additionally, this episode foreshadows the complex relationships and conflicts that will continue through generations, illustrating the long-term impact of decisions made in moments of doubts. Conclusion, Reflecting on Faith and Patience The Hagar episode in Abram's story is a poignant reminder of the complexities of faith. It reflects the human struggle to trust in God's timing and plan, especially in the face of, pro of prolonged waiting or challenging circumstances. 
This narrative invites reflection on the importance of patience and the, the dangers of substituting God's plan with our solutions. The kingdom promise deepened covenant of circumcision. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17 deepens the promise with the introduction of circumcision as the covenant sign. This physical act signifies the impending reality of a multitude of descendants leading to a kingdom. Abram renamed Abraham and all male members of his household, including Ismael, undergo this ritual, marking the movement towards the fulfillment of the kingdom promise. Introduction a new dimension to God's promise. Genesis chapter 17 introduces a significant development in the covenant between God and Abraham. This chapter deepens the kingdom promise by introducing circumcision as the physical sign of the covenant. This new element adds a tangible, enduring symbol of the covenant relationship between God and His chosen people. The covenant of circumcision, a physical sign of divine promise. Circumcision, the removal of the foreskin of the male genitalia, as instituted as a permanent sign of the covenant. This physical act is rich in symbolism and signifies several key themes. Firstly, it represents a mark of belonging, distinguishing Abraham and his descendants as God's chosen people. Secondly, it is a sign of faith and obedience a physical demonstration of Abram's commitment to God's promises. The act of circumcision is not merely a ritual. It is a deeply spiritual act that embodies the promise of a future kingdom through Abram's lineage. Abram to Abraham, a name change signifying destiny. In this same context, God changes Abram's name to Abram signifying a transformation in his identity and destiny. The new name, meaning father of many nations, is a direct affirmation of the promise of numerous descendants. Similarly, Sarah's name is changed to Sarah, meaning princess, further emphasizing her role in the covenant. These name changes are symbolic acts that reinforce the promises of God and the roles that Abraham and Sarah will play in the unfolding divine plan. Inclusion of Ismael and all males in the household The covenant of circumcision extends to all male members of Abraham's household, including his son Ismael. This inclusion is significant as it shows that the covenant is not just with Abraham but also with his entire household, extending to generations yet unborn. This universality underscores the comprehensive nature of God's covenant, encompassing both immediate and future members of Abraham's lineage. Circumcision as a step towards fulfillment The institution of circumcision is a pivotal step towards the fulfillment of the kingdom promise. It serves as a constant reminder of the relationship between God and His people, a relationship that is marked by promise, faith, and obedience. The ritual of circumcision is not just a physical act, but a symbol of the spiritual journey towards the realization of the multitude of descendants and the establishment of a kingdom as foretold by God. Abram's Intercession for Sodom and Gomorrah Genesis chapter 19 In Genesis chapter 19, Abram's role as an intercessor is highlighted in form of God's plan to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham pleads for the lives of the righteous, showing his concern for his nephew Lot. His bargaining with God from 50 down to 10 righteous people reflects his deepening relationship with God and concern for justice. Introduction Abraham as an Intercessor Genesis chapter 19 provides a compelling insight into Abraham's role as an intercessor showcasing a different aspect of his relationship with God. This chapter highlights his deep concern for righteousness and justice, as well as his willingness to engage directly with God on behalf of others. The Context of Sodom and Gomorrah's Impending Destruction The narrative begins with God revealing His plan to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah due to their great wickedness. 
This revelation sets the stage for Abram's intercessory role. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, notorious for their moral corruption, are facing divine judgment, raising questions about the fate of the righteous individuals living there, particularly Abram's nephew Lot. Abram's plea for the righteous. Abram's response to God's announcement is a profound demonstration of his sense of justice and compassion. He steps into the role of an intercessor, pleading with God to spare the city if righteous people can be found there. His plea, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Reflects this understanding of God's character as just and merciful. The process of bargaining from 50 to 10. One of the most striking aspects of this intercession is Abram's bargaining with God. He starts by asking if the city would be spared for 50 righteous people and progressively lowers the number, ultimately reaching 10. This process is not just haggling. It reveals Abram's growing understanding of God's mercy and his own role as an intercessor. It also reflects his deepening relationship with God characterized by honesty, boldness, and a heart aligned with God's values of righteousness and mercy. Reflection on Justice and Mercy Abram's intercession for Sodom and Gomorrah goes beyond personal concern for his nephew Lot. It represents a broader concern for justice and mercy in the divine judgment. This episode invites reflection on the balance between justice and mercy in God's character. Abram's dialogue with God demonstrates the possibility of human participation in divine decision-making, showcasing a dynamic relationship with God and humanity. Conclusion The Significance of Abram's Intercession Abram's intercession for Sodom and Gomorrah is a key moment in the Genesis narrative revealing aspects about human and divine nature. It highlights Abram's role as a mediator and his commitment to justice, as well as God's responsiveness to human concerns. This story underscores the importance of intercessory prayer and the influence of righteous individuals in shaping outcomes according to divine will. The ultimate test and worldwide blessing, Genesis chapter 22. The Akida or the binding of Isaac represents Abraham's ultimate test of faith, and aware that it is a test Abraham demonstrates complete trust in God by being willing to sacrifice his son, his link to the future. This event marks a turning point in Abraham's faith journey, culminating in the provision of a lamb as a substitute for Isaac. The name Yahweh Jerry, or God will provide, becomes central, illustrating the depth of God's provision and the breadth of the covenant's impact. Introduction The Akida, a defining moment in Abraham's faith. The narrative of the binding of Isaac, known as Akida, in Genesis chapter 22, is one of the most profound and challenging episodes in the Bible. This story, when Abraham is commanded to sacrifice his son Isaac, stands as the ultimate test of Abraham's faith and obedience. The context of the ultimate test The Akida occurs after God has promised Abraham that through Isaac, his descendants will be as numerous as the stars. The command to sacrifice Isaac seemingly contradicts God's earlier promises, placing Abraham in a situation of profound moral and spiritual conflict. Despite the apparent paradox, Abraham demonstrates unwavering faith by preparing to obey God's command. Abraham's Obedience and Trust in God Abraham's response to God's command is a testament to his complete trust and obedience. Without hesitation, Abraham prepares to sacrifice Isaac, the son through whom God promises were to be fulfilled. The act of obedience is not a blind one. It is rooted in Abraham's deep trust in God's character and his promises. Abraham's faith is such that he believes God could raise Isaac from the dead, a reflection of his unwavering belief in God's power and goodness. The Promise of Alam Yahweh Jerry at the moment of full ultimate crisis when Abram is about to sacrifice Isaac, God intervenes and provides a ram as a substitute for the boy. This intervention leads Abram to name the place Yahweh Jerry, 
meaning the Lord will provide. The theme of divine provision becomes central to understanding the nature of God in the biblical narrative. It illustrates that God's provision often comes in unexpected ways and that His plans are always consistent with His character and promises. Worldwide Blessing The Expansion of the Covenant Following the Akida, God reiterates and expands His covenant with Abraham. The willingness to sacrifice Isaac becomes the basis for a blessing that extends beyond Abraham's immediate family to all nations of the world. This worldwide blessing signifies the universal scope of God's redemptive plan, which starts with Abraham but reaches out to encompass all humanity. Conclusion is Akida's Enduring Legacy The story of Akida has profound implications for understanding faith, obedience, and divine provision. It highlights the depth of Abraham's faith and the breadth of God's covenant. The Akida also foreshadows key themes in the Christian faith, particularly the concept of substitutionary sacrifice. This narrative continues to resonate a powerful illustration of ultimate faith and trust in God's providence. In summary, the covenant with Abraham is more than a historical or theological event. It represents the evolution of faith, trust, and obedience. It sets the stage for the unfolding narrative of God's relationship with humanity and underscores the themes of promise, testing, and divine providence that permeate the biblical story. The expansion of Abraham's family, find a wife for Isaac, Genesis chapter 24. The mission to find a wife in Genesis chapter 24. The narrative shifts to focus on the growth of Abraham's family, specifically finding a suitable wife for Isaac, the son of promise. This chapter details the journey of Abraham's servant entrusted with the critical task of finding a bride for Isaac. The servant's mission is not just a familial duty but a step in fulfilling God's promise to Abraham, ensuring that the lineage and covenant continue through Isaac. Introduction The next step in fulfilling the covenant Genesis chapter 24 marks a pivotal point in the Abrahamic narrative, shifting the focus from Abraham's journey of faith to the continuity of his lineage through Isaac. This chapter emphasizes the importance of finding a suitable wife for Isaac as essential step in the continuation of God's covenant promise. The mission to find a wife, the task of divine significance. Abraham entrusts his oldest servant with the crucial mission of finding a wife for Isaac, underscoring the task's significance. This mission is not merely about familial duty or social norms. It is deeply rooted in the divine promise. The selection of a bride for Isaac is critical to ensuring the covenant's continuation and the fulfillment of God's promise to make Abraham's descendants a great nation. The Servant's Journey, Faith and Providence in Action The Servant's Journey to find a wife for Isaac is marked by prayer, faith, and an acute awareness of divine guidance. Upon arriving in Mesopotamia, Abram's homeland, the servant prays for a specific sign to identify the right woman for Isaac. His prayer reflects a deep trust in God's providence and direction, seeking not just a bride, but the right bride who would fit in the divine plan. Rebecca, the Chosen Bride Rebecca's introduction into the narrative is significant. She is presented as a woman of kindness, hospitality, and virtue, qualities deemed essential for the matriarchs of God's chosen people. He responds to the servant's request, water, and her initiative in watering the camels aligned perfectly with the sign he had prayed for, indicating God's hand in her selection. The Role of Divine Guidance and Confirmation Throughout this chapter, the theme of divine guidance and confirmation is prominent. The servant's experience in finding Rebecca is filled with instances of prayer, signs, and confirmation, all pointing to God's active role in the selection process. 
This narrative reinforces the idea that the covenant promises are not just fulfilled through human effort but through divine orchestration. Conclusion Continuity of the covenant through marriage The marriage of Isaac and Rebecca is more than a union of two individuals. It represents the continuation of the covenantal promise. This chapter in Genesis illustrates how God's promises to Abraham extend beyond his lifetime, moving through generations. The careful selection of Rebecca and her introduction into Abraham's family highlights the importance of marriage and family in the context of God's redemptive plan. Rebecca the Well, a divine appointment. The story reaches a pivotal moment when Abraham's servant meets Rebecca at the well. This encounter is laden with divine guidance as the servant's prayers for a sign are answered in Rebecca's actions. Her offer to draw water for him and his camels is seen as a fulfillment of the specific sign he had sought from God. This moment at the well is not merely a chance meeting, but a clear indication of divine providence at work in the continuation of Abraham's lineage. Introduction The Culmination of the Providential Mission The story of Rebecca at the well in Genesis chapter 24 represents a significant turning point in the biblical narrative. This event, marked by divine intervention and fulfillment of prayer, is a key moment in the unfolding of God's covenant with Abraham and the establishment of his lineage. The setting, Abraham's servant at the well. The scene is set with Abraham's servant arriving at the a well in Mesopotamia, carrying the weighty responsibility of finding a wife for Isaac. Understanding the gravity of his task, he turns to God in prayer, seeking a specific sign to identify the right woman. The well, a common meeting place in ancient times, becomes the stage for the divine appointment. The sign of a test of character and kindness. The servant prayer for a sign is specific. The woman who offers to draw water for him and his camels would be the one chosen by God for Isaac. This request is not arbitrary. It is designed to test the character and kindness of the potential bride. The act of drawing water for a stranger and his camels, a laborious task, would indicate a woman of compassion, diligence, and hospitality, qualities befitting the matriarchs of God's chosen people. Rebecca's Arrival, Fulfillment of the Prayer Rebecca's arrival at the well is perfectly timed. Her actions align precisely with the servant's prayer as she offers to draw water for him and his camels. This response is seen as a direct answer to the servant's prayer, indicating divine guidance. Rebecca's willingness to perform this generous act, especially towards a stranger, speaks volumes about her character and suitability as Isaac's wife. Divine Providence in Action This encounter at the well is a clear demonstration of divine providence. The way events unfold from the servant's prayer to Rebecca's timely arrival and actions is seen as God actively orchestrating the fulfillment of his covenant promise. This moment is not just a fortuitous meeting but a divine appointed encounter integral to the continuation of Abraham's lineage through Isaac. Conclusion The Significance of Rebecca's Role Rebecca's role in this narrative goes beyond being a passive character in the story. Her actions at the well reveal her as a pivotal figure in God's plan for Abraham's descendants. This encounter emphasizes the role of women in the biblical narrative and highlights the importance of character in divine guidance in fulfilling God's promises. Rebecca at the well symbolizes the continuation of the covenant and the perpetuation of the lineage that would eventually lead to the birth of the nation of Israel, Laban and the Agreement. The narrative progresses as Abraham's servant meets Rebekah's brother, Laban, and their mother. 
The sermon recounts his mission and the signs that led him to Rebecca, seeking their approval for their marriage. The family's agreement to let Rebecca go with the servant to marry Isaac is a crucial step in the unfolding divine plan, demonstrating the recognition of God's hand in those events. Introduction A Key Encounter in the Divine Plan The story of Abraham's servant's encounter with Rebecca's family, particularly her brother Laban, represents a crucial juncture in the continuation of the Abrahamic narrative. This part of the story highlights the importance of family consent and recognition of divine guidance in ancient matrimonial customs. Meeting with Laban and Rebecca's family Upon meeting Rebecca, Abram's servant is led to her family's home where he encountered her brother Laban and their mother. This meeting is essential as securing the family's approval is a critical step in the marriage process according to the customs of that time. The family's response would significantly impact the fulfillment of Abram's servant's mission. The servant's recount of his mission and divine signs. In the presence of Laban and the family, the servant recounts the purpose of his journey and the remarkable circumstances that led him to Rebekah. He describes his prayer at the well and how Rebekah's actions perfectly aligned with the sign he had asked from God. This recounting is not just a narrative. It is a testimony of God's active role in guiding him to the right bride for Isaac. Recognition of God's hands and family's consent Laban and his family's reaction to the servant's story is pivotal. They recognize the hand of God in these events as evidence in their response. This thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you, bad or good. Behold, Rebecca is before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. Their consent to let Rebecca marry Isaac is a crucial step indicating their understanding and acceptance of God's plan. The agreement as a fulfillment of the divine plan. The family's agreement for Rebecca to marry Isaac is more than a simple assent to a marriage proposal. It is an acknowledgement of the fulfillment of a divine plan. This agreement demonstrates a recognition of God's will and a willingness to participate in the unfolding of His covenant promises. It highlights the role of family and community in the biblical narrative and the importance of divine guidance in personal and communal decisions. Conclusions Laban's Role in the Covenantal Narrative Laban's role in this narrative, although brief, is significant. His agreement along with that of the family facilitates the next step in God's covenantal plan with Abraham. This episode illustrates the interplay between human agency and the divine direction, showcasing how individual decisions and family dynamics play a role in the larger divine scheme. Rebecca and Isaac, the union of the promised lineage. The culmination of the chapter is the union of Rebecca and Isaac. Rebecca's journey to become Isaac's wife is marked by trust and faith, both in her family's decision and in the larger divine plan that it represents. This marriage is not just the formation of a new family unit. It is a continuation of the covenantal promise made to Abraham. Rebecca's role as Isaac's wife and her subsequent place in the lineage of Israel is a testament to the ongoing fulfillment of God's promises through generations. Introduction A Marriage of Covenantal Significance The union of Rebecca and Isaac in Genesis represents more than a marital alliance. It signifies the continuation of the Abrahamic covenant. This marriage, marked by trust and divine guidance, is a crucial step in the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham. Rebecca's Journey of Trust and Faith Rebecca's decision to leave her home in journey to a distant land to marry Isaac is an act of remarkable trust and faith. 
her willingness to embark on this journey, leaving her family and familiar surroundings, reflects her confidence in the divine plan. This step is not just a personal decision. It is an integral part of the covenantal narrative whose individual choices aligned with divine purpose. The meeting of Rebecca and Isaac The meeting of Rebecca and Isaac is a poignant moment in the biblical narrative. As Isaac walks in the fields to meditate, he looks and sees Rebecca approaching. This first encounter is filled with anticipation and marks the beginnings of their life together. So Rebecca's action such as covering herself with a veil upon seeing Isaac indicates her respect and readiness for the new role she's about to undertake. The marriage is a continuation of the covenant. The marriage of Rebecca and Isaac is a fulfillment of the promise made to Abraham. It ensures the continuation of the covenantal line through which God has promised to bless all nations. This union is not merely a personal or social arrangement, but a vital link in the chain of God's redemptive history. Rebecca, as Isaac's wife, becomes a central figure in the lineage of Israel, playing a critical role in the covenant's progression. Rebecca's role in the covenantal lineage L Rebecca's role in the biblical narrative extends beyond his marriage to Isaac. She becomes a matriarch of the Israelite nation, and her actions and decisions significantly influence the course of the covenantal story. Her presence in the lineage of Israel is a testament to the ongoing fulfillment of God's promises through generations, highlighting the vital role of women in this biblical covenantal history. Conclusion The Union's Symbolic and Theological Significance the marriage of Rebecca and Isaac symbolizes the faithfulness of God in continuing His promises through successive generations. It is a union that stands at the intersection of human love and divine providence, reflecting the complexity and depth of God's plan for humanity. This story is not just a tale of romantic union, but a narrative rich in symbolic and theological significance, underscoring the continuity and faithfulness of God's covenantal promises. In summary, Genesis chapter 24 is a story of divine guidance, family legacy, and the fulfillment of God's promises. It highlights the role of faith and providence in the continuation of the covenantal lineage and sets the stage for the future narratives of Isaac and Rebecca's descendants. The chapter serves as a reminder of God's active involvement in the lives of those who are part of His divine plan. Thank you for joining us in this journey through the lives of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. We've explored how these foundational figures responded to God's call faced significant challenges, and ultimately contributed to the unfolding of God's covenant with humanity. We hope you found this episode insightful and inspiring. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on future episodes. In our next episode, we'll continue with the saga of Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, diving deeper into their personal journeys their trials, and how their faith played a crucial role in shaping the destiny of their descendants. You won't want to miss it. Until then, may the stories of the patriarch encourage you in your own walk of faith. Thank you for watching, and God bless.